7 meeting of the Planning and Zoning Commission, and George Hamner will lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, on the minutes, uh, I've already told Rita about one item, uh, the item on consent uh, that whoever made the motion and second uh, is missing there. I don't know who that was. Does anybody else have any uh, changes? Do I have a motion? So moved. Okay, second. second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Passes unanimously. Uh, we have one item pulled. Uh, the first item uh, on the agenda, Oslo Commerce Center. Uh, and we have four dev up. We need to do the uh, uh, swearing in on this. If you're going to testify, would you please raise your right hand? Do you swear or affirm to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Okay, I'll read this into the record. Uh, Four Dev request to rezone plus or minus 6.78 acres located on the southwest corner of U.S. Highway 1 and 50, 53rd Street from IL Light Industrial to CG General uh, Commercial Four Dev LLC owner, Knight McGuire and Associates, Inc. agent. And this is quasi judicial. Rachel, you're up. Thank you. Rachel Klein, planner with Long Range Planning. As you said, this is a rezoning that's located off of US 1 and 53rd Street. It's almost seven acres, and the request is to go from IL Light Industrial to CG General Commercial. The purpose of this zoning request is to, to develop the site with a use that's allowed under the CG Zoning District, which would be consistent with the land use designation of CI Commercial Industrial. For the existing land uses to the north is currently zoned CG and contains a convenience store and gas station. To the east is also CG and an abandoned grove. To the south, IL is a landscape supply. <coughs> and to the west, across Old Dixie Highway and the railroad tracks, uh, contains an asphalt and concrete plant. As with all rezoning, the following criteria at criteria are analyzed, concurrency, consistency with the comprehensive plan, the environmental impact, and compatibility with the surrounding uses. And with concurrency, we did determine that there was capacity in concurrency related for all of the facilities, including transportation, water, wastewater, solid waste, stormwater management, and recreation. And at the time of development, a more detailed concurrency review would be required. As far as consistency with the comprehensive plan, we do look at all of the policies, but the most applicable for these would be the future land use policies 1.15 and 1.16. This request is consistent with the comprehensive plan. The environmental impacts for both the existing IL zone and the requested CG are the same. There are no adverse impacts for the environment anticipated. And with the compatibility, with the CG to the north and the east, this would be a continuation of the CG. The IL to the south um, is not an incompatibility, excuse me, is not an incompatibility. And then to the west being IG, the separation of Old Dixie and the railroad, uh, there would be no incompatibility there as well. So in conclusion, uh, with the requested CG zoning, it's compatible with the surrounding uses, consistent with the comprehensive plan. It did meet the concurrency test, and there are no additional environmental impacts. So staff does support the request and recommends that the Planning and Zoning Commission recommend to the board to approve this request. Do you have any questions? Thank you, Rachel. Does anybody up here have any questions? Okay, this is a public hearing. I'll open the public hearing. Does anybody wish to speak? I don't see anybody that wishes to speak, so close the public hearing. Do I have a motion? So moved. Second? Second. Okay. Who made the motion? I made the motion to approve staff's report. Donna beat me. Donna on that. Uh, all, all in favor? Aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Passes unanimously. Uh, let's see. Planning matters. <laughs> Commissioner's matters, I'm sorry. 
Anybody have anything? Bob? No. Go ahead. Yeah, you see we're all wearing our uh, book fest fins. Mm -hmm. Just want to <laughs> remind everyone of the book fest on the November the 15th through the 17th, 17th downtown Pearl Beach. Um, I just wanted to comment, and uh, Bob, I'm sure you'll keep us all informed of the activities associated with the lands out west and uh, the interaction of the municipalities and the commission in, in determining what's going to happen out there. I, yes, you, you're definitely going to get an opportunity to weigh in on that probably several times. I, I think I think you all probably know since the, the charter effort uh, kind of fizzled, the uh, what took its place was the interlocal service boundary agreement. And right now the county and the municipalities are working on that. And that's going to, to some extent, determine actually who has jurisdiction over some of the land outside the urban service area. Through this process, we'll probably be, we being the parties of the <coughs> county and the municipalities, will be setting up some reserve areas, which are exclusive areas, which each municipality can annex in. And they'll have, if they annex there, they'll have land use authority. So that's, that's one program that's going on right now that's going to determine the fate of the areas outside the urban service area. Another thing that we're doing is, at the direction of the board, we are revisiting the new town policies, and we'll be coming back to you on that sometime soon. There's also the Paladin plan out there that the board has asked us to look at. And finally, you know, we are working on the EAR. I know I keep threatening the <laughs> EAR. Uh, and, and we're getting closer and closer, but I anticipate probably soon after the beginning of the calendar year, we'll bring you the future land use year and you'll, you'll be looking at Western lands at that time, too. Thanks, Bob. Great. Planning matters. Several things. Several things. Let, let me update you on what happened at the board meeting Tuesday. First of all, on Tuesday, the board considered the January comp plan amendments for adoption. The, these are amendments that you all saw back in May and the board adopted all of them. And these were <coughs> creating the new mobile home park, land use designation, redesignating 12 parks to that new designation, uh, some minor changes to the transportation element, and then the set of school concurrency documents, which included a new public school facility element and amendments to the capital improvements element and intergovernmental coordination element. Also on Tuesday, the board approved the mining ordinance changes that y'all recommended. And they went a little further. Sort of. <laughs> the board decided that, that there are some problems with some of the current mining operations, particularly those off from 82nd Avenue. They're causing some problems with the roadway and actually inconveniencing a lot of the people out there. And the board's aware of the fact that we have three mining applications in-house that we're looking at right now. So the board actually had directed the county attorney's office to initiate the process of putting a moratorium on new mining site plans. Um, the good or bad news for y'all in, in that respect is a moratorium has to be approved in the same manner that the regulation that, that it relates to has to be approved. In this case, it's an LDR, so the moratorium initiative would have to come through the Planning and Zoning Commission and then two public hearings before the board. So you will get an opportunity to weigh in on the mining ordinance moratorium. Um, just a couple of other things. You'll probably be busy with a number of other LDR amendments that we've got going on right now. On Wednesday, yesterday, we had a workshop on the public nuisance ordinance, and that's, that's an item that's been controversial recently. One aspect of the public nuisance ordinance is weeds and grasses and the height and applying it 
to multifamily developments and not just single family. And the initiative for that is what's happening in the Vista projects. So that'll probably be coming to you, I think, probably in your December meeting. Uh, I think Stan has told you in previous meetings we will be bringing changes to 910 concurrency to you probably at your next meeting on November 8th. Um, that those changes have gone to PSAC and they'll be coming here soon. And then also the rezoning that was scheduled for tonight, we're re-advertising and that will be on next week's agenda. So, but next, yes, next meeting, November 8th. And the, the good news about that is that's the only meeting in November. Good. And those are my matters. Attorneys. None. Good. I think we have a record here. Uh, 11 <laughs> minutes. We're adjourned.